Horrors and gents, welcome to Sujuri Excel and this is The Fermi Paradox. Where are all the aliens? Part 1 by the channel Kuskazat in a nutshell. The universe is unbelievably big. Trillions of stars and even more planets. So, there just has to be life out there, right? Where is it? Why don't we see any aliens? Where are they? And more importantly, what does this tell us about our own fate in the gigantic and scary universe? Yeah, the great filter uh, point too. So yeah, for me, paradox as far as I know, simplistic way, basically just means that, you know, there are this many planets, this many stars. So, you know, uh, if there is a civilization, then that civilization goes to another planet. Then from that planet, more people goes to some other planet so from one to two two to four and just colonizes planet after planet after planet and if it goes on with that rate it would take a couple of million years to you know uh, basically call i guess you know colonize every single planet of the entire galaxy so if it just takes a few million years and it's been you know our galaxy and everything's been for billions of years where are the aliens so, you know, that's the question that, that uh, you know, gives you a b bit of a scary look. Like, yeah, maybe the aliens died off. Then the, that great filter, the video we saw, point comes on, like after a certain point, civilization dies or something. Or maybe we are the one of the early ones. Or one of the more plausible one, that we are the aliens. We are one of the, you know, one of the people who got colonized. So we are in the middle of that chain of colonization, who knows? But if that's the case, uh, the people who colonized us, why are they not contacting us? I don't know. So yeah, this is, in a way, this is just basically like, you know, there are Carter's scale, is that what's called? That, you know, implies that, you know, type 1 civilization, type 2 civilization, things like that. So when civilizations get even bigger, they, they, they want to colonize. And if they colonize like this, there will be, you know, aliens would be, you know, everywhere, basically, in the entire galaxy. Uh... You know, maybe we are the first of uh, this uh, intelligence species or something in this galaxy. Maybe we will do this one day. Or maybe we are one of the aliens who colonized us and just moved on. Who the hell knows? Uh, yeah, this, this feels very simple, but this also feels very true. And it poses a scary question like, what if the Great Filter is a real thing? What if we are walking to our doom and we don't even know about it? But yeah. Let's watch this one. Remember people, this is Khosgazad video. It might get blocks out of the checkered box there, but I guess we'll see. Let's watch this. Are we the only living things in the entire universe? The observable universe is about 90 billion light years in diameter. There are at least 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 to 1000 billion stars. Recently, we've learned that planets are very common too. And there are probably trillions and trillions of habitable planets in the universe, which means there should be lots of opportunity for life to develop and exist, right? But where is it? Shouldn't the universe be teeming with spaceships? Let's take a step back. And it's just not that. I mean, let's ignore the Fermi Paradox. If there is an alien out there, even in our own galaxy, I mean, they or us will not know about it because, you know, we've been sending, you know, our radio signals for past 100 or so years. And if you see the, you know, bubble of how far the radio signal has gone uh, compared to our own galaxy, it's like nothing. It's like this small dot compared to the whole galaxy. So let's say if there is an advanced civilization in the other side of the galaxy, you know, they will never hear about us for thousands of years still. So, you know, I like somebody said the analogy, like, you know, saying that there are no aliens after looking all this thing. It's like, you know, uh, taking just a you know, cup of water from the sea and saying, oh, look, at that, there is no fish here. That's the equivalent of this. Even if there are alien civilizations in other galaxies, there's no way we'll ever know about them. Basically, everything outside of our direct galactic neighborhood, the so-called local group, is pretty much out of our reach forever because of the expansion of the universe. Even if we had really fast spaceships, it would literally take billions of years to reach these places, traveling through the emptiest areas in the universe. So let's focus on the Milky Way. 
The Milky Way is our home galaxy. It consists of up to 400 billion stars. That's a lot of stars, roughly 10,000 for every grain of sand on Earth. There are about 20 billion sun-like stars in the Milky Way, and estimates suggest that a fifth of them have an Earth-sized planet in its habitable zone, the area with conditions that enable life to exist. If only 0.1% of those planets harbored life, there would be one million planets with life in the Milky Way. But wait, there's more. The Milky Way is about 13 billion years old. In the beginning, it would not have been a good place for life because things exploded a lot. But after one to two billion years, the first habitable planets were born. Earth is only four billion years old, so there have probably been trillions of chances for life to develop on other planets in the past. If only a single one of them had developed into a space-traveling super-civilization, we would have noticed by now. What would such a civilization look like? There are three categories. Yeah, that is the one scary point that I always have an issue about this Fermi Paradox things, because the thing I said before, like, you know, I'm not that, uh, you know, tensed up about this. Like, maybe we are the first one. That doesn't feel plausible to me because life started on this planet as soon as it could have. The condition was right and the life started. Now there are, you know, before our own solar system, there are already solar system way long before that. And there are planets, Earth-like planets there, even longer time than, you know, we are here. So, you know, th their condition would have been right billions of years ago. So if life developed there, it should be out there. So, according to the Fermi Paradox, their civilization must be billions of years ahead of us. So they should be here, aliens should be here. And we, we could detect them, but we are not. So, I don't know what, that, what does that say. A Type 1 civilization would be able to access the whole energy available on its planet. In case you're wondering, we're currently around 0.73 on the scale, and we should reach Type 1 sometime in the next couple of hundred years. Type 2 would be a civilization capable of harnessing all of the energy of its home star. This would require some serious science fiction, but it is doable in principle. Concepts like the Dyson Sphere, a giant complex surrounding the Sun, would be conceivable. Type 3 is a civilization that basically controls its whole galaxy and its energy. An alien race this advanced would probably be godlike to us. But why should we be able to see such an alien civilization in the first place? If we were to build generation spaceships that could sustain a population for around 1,000 years, we could colonize the whole galaxy in there 2 million go. years. Sounds like a long time, but remember, the Milky Way is huge. So if it takes a couple of million years to colonize the entire galaxy, and there are possibly millions, if not billions of planets that sustain life in the Milky Way, and these other life forms have had considerably more time than we've had, then where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox, and nobody has an answer to it. But we do have some ideas. Let's talk about filters. A filter in this context represents a barrier that is really hard for life to overcome. They come in various degrees of scary. One, there are great filters and we have passed them. Maybe yeah. it is way harder for complex life to develop than we think. The process allowing life to begin hasn't yet been yeah, the argument of, you know, uh, life, uh, maybe it is, you know, because the life started on the earth as soon as it could have. But that's not the complex life that we know of. Complex life also started as soon as it could have, but, you know, not the life as we know today, intelligence life, humans. So maybe intelligent life is rare. Maybe condition has to be just right, a certain order. And it, it, it's basically a fluke that intelligence exists, we exist. If that's the case, we might be rarity. But as far as life goes, life is, you know, life should be common. Because life started as soon as it could have. So, you know, life should be common. But intelligent life, human type life, yeah, I mean, that is, that is true. It could be a fluke. We could be a fluke. We came to existence because the conditions were just right. That could be true too completely figured out and the conditions required may be really complicated. Yeah. Maybe in the past, the universe was way more hostile and only recently have things cooled down to make complex life possible. 
This would also mean that we may be unique, or at least one of the first, if not the first, civilization in the entire universe. Yeah. Two, there are great filters, and they are ahead of us. Damn. This one would be really, really bad. Maybe life on our level exists everywhere in the universe, but it gets destroyed when it reaches a certain point. Nuclear warfare feels very, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be one of the filter because it could be, you know, just human thing. But as far as climate change, I mean, any civilization rise up, uses their natural resources and in the order of doing that ruins their planet and basically kills, you know, s kills themselves. Climate change could be one of the key thing that could be one of the massive filter. And before uh, the you know intelligent species learn how to colonize other planets, climate change already kills them. That could be one of the filter. Who knows? A point that lies ahead of us. For example, awesome future technology exists, but when activated, it destroys the planet. The last words of every advanced civilization would be, this new device will solve all of our problems once yeah. I push this button. If this is no, true... It's more like, hmm, this is interesting. That's the most scariest thing a scientist can say. Hmm, this is interesting. And that was the last word ever spoken by any human. Then we are closer to the end than the beginning of human existence. Or maybe there is an ancient type 3 civilization that monitors the universe. And once a civilization is advanced enough, it gets eliminated in an Mass Effect fan, are you? <laughs> That's a Reaper, apparently. Instant. Maybe there is something out there that it would be better not to discover. There is no way for us to know. One final thought, maybe we're alone. Right now, we have no evidence that there's any life besides us. Nothing. The universe appears to be empty and dead. No one sending us messages, no one answering our calls. We yeah. may be completely alone, trapped on a tiny moist mud ball in an eternal universe. Does that thought scare you? If it does, you're having the correct emotional reaction. If we let life on this planet die, perhaps there will be no life left in the universe. Look, here's the things. Uh, we would love, anybody would love to meet an alien. But there's also scary ramification of it. Because if we go through what we do in the past, all the, whenever there's an advanced civilization, advanced, let's just say advanced people meet another type of people, it's never good for the less advanced people. And if there is an alien who could come here, traveling light years, you know, and just come here at the earth, I think they would be pretty advanced than us and that would not be good for us. I mean, that's the biggest fear all the major scientists have. Like, if there is an alien who can come here, we are basically screwed. So, we are alone, that's not so bad a thing, but yeah. Life will be gone, maybe forever. If this is the case, we just have to venture to the stars and become the first Type 3 civilization to keep the delicate flame of life existing and to spread it until the universe breathes its final breath and vanishes into oblivion. Yeah. The universe is too beautiful not to be experienced by someone. This video was made possible by your support. Yeah, this was a good point. For me, paradox is a scary thing. I mean, it's very simple when you think about it, but it is, has a scary elements to it, great filter and things. Yeah. All right, that was Kuzgazat video of Fermi Paradox. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards for the playlist. Check out the end cards. And yeah, I'll see you next time.